Hi everybody! Today's video is a little bit different because I am going to be editing down a live stream that I have done previously on my channel. This was a stream where I made a piece of furniture and I offered up the free pattern, but I know not everybody's into the live stream and even if you do enjoy the live streams, it's kind of hard to go through a two hour video and find every single step that you're wanting to do. So I've decided that between some of my videos that take longer for me to put together, I am going to be editing down some of these streams. Because of this, this video will look a little bit different. There will be a gray box up in the corner over my live stream face, which will be talking and my lips won't be matching up with the voiceover. And there will also be a gray bar at the bottom that's blocking out some scrolling text, just because I think it's kind of distracting to have during a tutorial. As I said, there is a free pattern, so make sure to check the description box below. I will be working in 124 scale or half scale, as I call it sometimes but there's also a pattern for 112 scale. So let's get started. To start out, you'll want to grab the pattern from the description box below. You can either use the half scale pattern like I'm using to match my half scale chair, or you can use the 12 scale pattern, which I suggest using foam board in place of anywhere I use mat board. I previously cut out the pieces and I'm laying them all out to make sure that they match what I need. You can see the couch design that I'm going for on screen. This is going to go in my Fairfield project and that is why I am doing this in half scale or 124 scale. To start out, I'm taking my two larger pieces and connecting them like this. I need to make sure that the back panel is glued on at an angle so that it will match with the angle that is on the back of one of my arm pieces. I'm going to be using hot glue in this tutorial, although you can use tacky glue. I'm using hot glue because this was made during a live stream and I want to make sure everything goes together rather quickly. To start the process of upholstering the couch, I'm going to upholster the entire back and bottom of the couch with one piece of fabric. I cut the fabric large enough so that it could cover all the edges and then I started covering the entire surface with glue. I'm flattening it out as much as possible because any large globs of glue will soak through the fabric. I'm being careful on the bottom even though it will be covered up later <laughs> in the future, but I'm being extra careful on the back because you will be able to see the fabric that's on the back. I'm folding the fabric over the top edge and the bottom edge, making sure again that I make the glue as flat as possible. I'm not worrying too much about the flaps of fabric that I'm folding down on the inside of the couch because eventually they will be covered with upholstered cushions. I just want to make sure that they are as flat to the mat board as possible. When I get to the sides of the couch, the important part here is to cut a small slit in the corners of the fabric, but not all the way to the mat board. I'm leaving about a 16th inch of the fabric uncut so that when I fold it over, that uncut fabric will cover the corner of the couch. If I had slid it all the way up to the edge of the couch, there may be a little bit of mat board showing through the corner. I'm going to make sure that I squish down the sides as flat as possible and when I get to the corners I'm pinching them and then I'm going to use my scissors to cut them off once they're dry. Once I have everything covered in fabric it will look like this. Now I can move on to working on the interior pieces. These are going to be cut from chipboard. This is just like cereal box material. You can also cut it from chipboard for the 12 scale version of this couch. Just something stiff enough that you can glue the fabric to. I'm going to be cutting a little bit off of the edges. I used the original pattern to get the general shape, but then I'm going to be checking it with my couch because the fabric going around the sides is going to cause some bulk. I'm just shaving down the sides just a little bit to allow for that fabric. To create the cushions for the couch, I'm going to be using some quilt batting and then the same fabric I just used for the exterior of the couch. I'm cutting off a little bit and then I'm going to glue my chipboard piece to the back of the batting and then cut it so that it matches the shape. You can do as many layers of this batting as you would like. I am just doing one because I'm trying to keep it pretty thin for the half scale look of it. I wish I had done two once I was done with the whole thing, but um, you really just kind of have to check your image and see how thick you want the cushions to be. 
Now that I have my batting glued onto my chipboard, I want to create some tufting in the back. As you can see on my photo, there are a few buttons holding the tufts into the back of the cushion. To do this, I used a ruler to mark out where I wanted my holes to be, and I'm using a needle to poke through the chipboard. Once the holes are poked, I'm going to flip over my back cushion so that I can see the holes, and then I am going to upholster that piece in the fabric that matches my couch. Again, I am working slowly, trying to make sure that my fabric is as flat as possible once it is glued. The flatter you get it, the better your joints are going to look on this couch. I'm pinching the corners, and then I'm going to use my scissors to chop the corners off making sure that I have enough fabric covering the corners so that you cannot see the chipboard or the quilt batting. Then I can check it on my couch to make sure that it is looking correct before I do all the process of tufting the back. In order to tuft it, what I'm going to do is I am going to put three knots into each string. So I'm going to tie it three times, three times around the loop, pull it tight, and then I'm going to put the loose ends of the string through the needle so I have the knot on one side and the loose ends on the other. I'm going to use my needle to poke up through the back of the cushion through the chipboard. This will make a small hole in the fabric which I will use as a guide to know where I need to put my needle through from the front or the fabric side. This will draw my string through so I'm left with the knot on the fabric side of the cushion. When I pull it tight, it will look like tufting on the front. I am going to do this three times because I am adding three tufts on the front of the cushion. I am using a hot glue gun here, just a little bit, the tiniest bit of hot glue because I don't want to add any bulk. This is going to secure my strings in place so that my tufting doesn't come undone. Then I'm just going to take away the extra strings by cutting them off, and then my cushion for the back of my couch should be finished. In order to attach it, I am again using hot glue, but you can use another type of glue if you don't care to use hot glue. I'm using the minimal amount of glue so that nothing squishes out the side and ruins my fabric as I push it onto the couch. I'm going to press down firmly because I want those gaps to be as small as possible. Now I can try and figure out the size I need for my chipboard. I want to cut off small slim bits on the back of the bottom cushion shape until I feel like it fits really well in the space that is left. The back cushion took up a little bit of the space and so that's why I waited to trim it down until now so that I can check with the back cushion that's already installed and make sure I have enough space for the seat cushion. I'm going to upholster the seat cushion in the very same way I did for the back cushion, except I am going to be adding a lot more quilt batting so it looks thicker like it does in my photo. I'm also not going to have to do any tufting on this piece, so it is much easier to upholster. Once I'm happy with the thickness, I'm going to take my same fabric and again fold it over the edges to upholster it. I do want to pay special attention to the very front of the cushion and make sure that this is the side that looks the best once all of my pieces are folded down. You won't be able to see the sides or the back and so those can kind of be the ones that you play with a little bit once you have the front cushion glued down and looking as smooth as possible. This is how I folded mine. I folded in the bottom and then pulled down the top piece of fabric, folded it underneath the cushion and so now I have a very smooth edge on the front of my couch seat cushion. There are many ways to do this, but this is the way I chose to do mine. Now I can go back and check the fit of the piece I just made with my entire couch. It looks like it fits really well, so I can go ahead and glue it in place. I'm going to be using minimal amounts of glue again, and I am going to be pressing firmly because it does seem like there's a little bit more gaps in between the seat and the couch bottom, and so I'm just making sure that as I press down and the glue takes hold, those gaps get as small as possible. Now I'm going to be moving on to the arms of the couch. On the pattern, you will know that one side of the arm is angled and the other side is straight. The angled side goes towards the back of the couch. 
I'm only going to be upholstering one side of the arm because in my sample photo it looks like it has a triangular um, shape to the upholstery, but just on the side. The interior arm will stay flat so it's easy to connect it to the couch. So I'm just upholstering the exterior edge. I'm adding smaller and smaller, or I should say thinner and thinner bits of upholstery so that as you get to the top of the arm, the upholstery is thicker. This is just what I'm seeing from the picture. You can kind of do whatever you want with your arms. I'm adding one last little strip to the top just to make sure I have that triangular shape that I'm going for with the stuffing, and then I'm going to chop off any extra bits on either side. I'm going to do these same steps for both arms of the couch, except they are going to be mirrored. So make sure you know which side you're working on, put it onto your couch, and check. Now I'm going to be covering it in fabric, the same fabric I've been using all along, although I do enjoy couches that use different fabrics, so you can kind of play with that if you like. I am going to be first folding up the edge that goes on the bottom of the arm. I'm going to be making sure that that is as flat as possible. Then I'm going to wrap the fabric over the top of the arm, which has the thickest bit of batting. And then I am going to cut it off so it's even here at the bottom, because that will be hidden by the bottom seat of the couch. So if there's a seam there, it won't matter. I'm going to glue that down, hold it in place, and then I can use my scissors to cut off any excess material. So now the exposed seam of the material should be at the bottom of the arm, and when you put it on your couch, it should be hidden. Now I can focus on the sides of the arm, or like the edges of the burrito. It kind of looks like a burrito right now. I used my fingers to feel where the edge of the mat board was, and then I cut off the fabric so I had about an eighth inch of fabric left. Then I'm going to add glue inside the opening and then slowly press the fabric into the glue on the interior so that it closes up. This is going to be the front of the arm of the couch, so the part that you can see when you're looking at the front of the couch. It doesn't have to be very pretty because I am going to cut a piece that covers it up later. For the back of the arm, is it's a little bit easier. I am going to do the same thing where I leave about an eighth inch or a little bit more even. You'll have to kind of figure out how it will work best for your couch. And then I'm going to push the fabric around the back and then it is going to lay down flat and be hidden by the side of the couch. So I hope it was clear on how that was done. You can also do it the exact same way that we did the front of the arm if that was more clear, but all I did was squish it over and uh, wherever there was a seam, I just made sure that that was going to be hidden by the couch body. Now I'm adding a very small amount of glue and I'm going to glue it to the side of the couch body so that all of the seams we just created are hidden. Once both the arms are on, this is how it is looking. So it's starting to look like a couch. <laughs> That's good. I did notice my cushion was not as square in the front as the picture, and I definitely could have done a few things to change that, but it still works for this design. Now I'm going to move on to adding the details and the legs. For this, I am using, again, some chipboard that I'm going to be painting. You could also use some wood if you plan to stain this part. I am drawing a very simple sketch of the shape that is made by the front of my arms so that I have a little piece that will fit perfectly on the front. I'm going to make two of these and then I am going to go ahead and paint them. I chose this fun teal color. I don't know why, I just thought it would be an exciting color to go with all the brown. I'm painting them on my hand because my hand is easier to keep track of the small pieces and easy to clean off. I'm going to be tracing the bottom part of my couch and cutting the shape just a little bit smaller than the couch itself, and this is going to be my base where I can install the legs. I am also going to paint this piece the same color that I painted the front pieces that are going to go on my arms. I used a pencil to mark out where I wanted my legs to be on the couch. This is on the underside of the couch. And I'm going to use a needle again to poke through the chipboard and create small holes. 
I can then take toothpicks, which is what I'm going to be using for my half scale couch. You can also use barbecue skewers for the 12th scale if you want a similar look, but in a bigger size. I'm using it to poke through the chipboard so that the holes are big enough when I go to install my legs. Now I'm going to use glue and glue it to the bottom of my couch and this will create a way for me to put the legs in easily. I'm also going to at this time put the covers that go on the front of my couch. I do think it would have been okay to leave them off but I do think it gave it kind of that cool retro feel that I was going for in the beginning of this project. And I think the colors, the bright colors kind of go with the little chair I'm trying to match as well. Now I'm going to be installing the legs by using some super glue. I'm taking the wide end of the toothpick and I cut these to about, I think a half inch and I'm going to push it into the hole I created, swivel it around so that I know it gets stuck up in there. And then they're slightly angled to the outside to give it that retro look. All that's left to do now is paint the legs to match the teal on everything else. And that is it. There is a retro couch to go with my little half scale armchair. So that's all I have for you today. Please let me know if you enjoyed having the live stream edited down. If that's something that you find useful, I will try to continue to do that. Go back, look through my live streams, find ones that I think would make a great tutorial and edit them when I have some time. If you make this couch, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Bentley House Minis so I can see what you've made. I hope you all have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Nope. Earrings. Much better.